the seven minute appointment, um, like I was saying, is demonstrated in uh, just a few different steps. Usually you, when you meet people, um, well, let me tell you why you would want to do a seven minute appointment. And not every single appointment is always seven minutes, but it's important that you actually can execute a seven minute appointment. And the reason is because if you don't tell the client what to do, then they'll tell you what to do. Okay. <laughs> okay. Same thing with if you don't tell the client what you charge, then they'll tell you what to charge. Right. Same idea, same principle. And the reality is that clients, they're looking for this. They actually want you to direct them and guide them. They want that. That's what they're looking for. And when you don't do that, that's when you end up in somebody's house, cornered for 45, an hour, hour and 15 minutes. And think about this. Yeah, you're getting paid, but you're not. Right. <laughs> so how valuable is your time? I don't know about you guys, but my time is extremely valuable, extremely valuable. So the seven minute appointment was developed out of the necessity not to be disrespectful or to rush your clients is to keep them on track because every single appointment is different. No, no, you're not even the same person that you were yesterday. So, or last year. So you can't expect that from your clients. When you go into somebody's appoint, um, their, their house, their, their, their business, apartment space, living room, you just never know. You really don't know what you're ever going to walk into. So whenever something comes up, and it will, if something will come up, uh, you, you want to keep them on track. So the seven-minute appointment was developed to make sure that you signal to the client without being rude or unnecessarily forceful, but to... to um, what uh, what ancient Kemetic uh, Egyptians they used to say we can mind read. They they didn't mind read both people's mind, but essentially they were on the same page that they knew what each other was thinking. So it's very powerful ancient knowledge in this whole development. Not to get uh, ethereal on you guys, but um, when you tell somebody, "Hey, this is what I'm here to do," that's a signal to them that this appointment is getting ready to begin. Hey, I'm here to do two things. That's a right. signal to somebody. Hey, the, the appointment has started. I, I know we did the little chit chat and we did the building rapport and we got to know each other. Hey, this is a beautiful home you got here. Oh my God. Oh, I love this. is such a cute baby, right? That stuff is all customary and is good. Take your shoes off. Oh, those are nice socks you got there. All that stuff is good, but then you have to signal to the person that, hey, this is we're here for business, and that's the way I do it. Hey, guys, I'm here to do two things. That is a signal to somebody, it's time to shut up and let me listen. So you start the appointment, you tell the person, you're. I like to say, hey, man, I'm a fortune teller, and, and that catches them off guard, right? They don't know, what? What are you talking about? I say, I, I'm going to predict your future. This is what's going to happen. I'm going to sign, take your signatures. I'm going to uh, you know, prove to me that you are who you say you are. I'm going to witness you sign. You're telling the person what's getting ready to happen. Step by step by step. So, um, And that keeps you on track. And that, and again, your customers are looking for that. They don't want you to be guessing and umming and umming and ooing and not knowing and unsure and unconfident. That's right. The, yeah. <laughs> that's the quickest way to not ever yeah. get called again. <laughs> so notary is easy. It's easy. The fulfillment part, the actual execution part, what I like to call the job part of it is pretty simple, very simple. But today we're going to talk about Google ads and how to actually get clients. But I saw this video and I thought it was so, I thought it was perfect because of what we're talking about. The hardest part about the notary business is really just acquiring the client the acquisition of new clients, whether you pay for the client, which is my favorite, you pay for the clients, you run Google ads or you run thumbtack paid advertisement. It's the fastest to me. It's the most efficient. And it's to me, it's the most predictable. The other methods like business cards and handing out flyers and word of mouth, 
you know, those things are good. Slow. I don't like slow. We like speed. We like fast. We like the predictability. So I think that um, the Google Ads is great. And if we're going to go, if you guys are happy to screen share, if you have a capability, if you have a, an account, then we can look through that account. And then I can help you optimize. Uh, setting up the Google ad is easy, but optimizing it, that's that's what 99% of people don't do. They don't go to refine the keywords. They don't look at the search terms. They don't eliminate the negative words. They don't adjust the targeting of the location where they're getting the most hits. You know, that's the optimization process. And that needs to be done every week, every three months, every month, daily. It needs, and if you don't do that, then you'll, you'll waste a lot of money. So we can help. Uh, I can help you do that. Um, okay. So let me pull up this video. So again, you signal to the client, hey, this is getting ready to start. I say, hey, I'm here for two things. After my introduction, you to do this, do that, do this. And um, witness you sign. And you got to prove to me who you, that you are who you say you are. And I, I throw in these little silly, you know, dumb jokes. It's not funny when I say it, but in the context, it's hilarious. It works. It kills. And I do the same thing every day single time that's why i'm able to do it so efficiently and so effectively and you can too i really wish that you would do an appointment just like you don't have to do it i know people have different ideas of how to do it but do it like this it works hey it works okay it works and it's very fast and people um they really enjoy it and then you um look at so if they have a document um i'm looking at the document i always tell the person the the contents of the document, none of my business. I don't care. You can be selling half the state of California for all I care. I don't, it's not my business. My job is to make sure that you are who you say you are because the Secretary of State, who is a very smart woman, especially if there's women here, I always make that point as well. <laughs> yeah, very smart women. Do you, do you know who she is? They're like, no, I never heard of her. Shirley Weber, yeah. She's a sister too. And uh, they say, oh, really? Like, yeah, yeah. She wants me to witness you sign. Go back to the serious tone. She wants me to witness you sign because your name, do you know how valuable your name is? They say, uh, I don't know. Yeah, your name is priceless. You know that? It's priceless. There's no amount of money you can put on your name. That's why it's important that I see you. And then I'll complete your certificate, stamp, that's it. It's not complicated. I witness you sign, stamp the document, that's it. But the reality is, it's not like that, right? Because things pop up, as we'll see in this video, as you'll hear, rather. And, um, you know, he's going to, you'll hear, he's talking about, yeah, I'm actually the power of attorney for my mother. She's in a different state. All these situations do pop up. How do you handle it? How do you ha handle it with confidence is probably a better question. Because the moment that the client senses that you may not know what you're talking about, that's when, oh, man, uh, then they start asking questions. And, and what happens when People ask questions. Hey, man, sounds like a question for an attorney. I can't answer the question. You're supposed to know exactly what you're doing. So this is how you command the room. And again, clients are looking for this. All right, so let's listen here. We'll go to like right around. Um, I had to find parking. I, I guess there was like street sweeping that day. So the lady said, don't park there, don't park there. <laughs> Hey, Mr. Anthony? Yes, how are you? So, always start the appointment. Are you Anthony? Are you Joseph? Are you Sabrina? Then they identify themselves because that's the person who paid you, right? And then, and then they say, yeah, I'm him. I say, okay, great. I'm here to do the notary appointment, right? Always identify the person first. This makes it so, because if you're not the person, then I don't need to talk to you, but you need to point me to whoever that person is if you know where they are. This makes it very quick, very efficient. So you're not wandering around somebody's business. <laughs> yeah, it was a nice property. Oh, excellent. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My wife always says, someone compliments you, let me know. So I'll let her know. Okay, cool. Okay. <laughs> All right. I don't know if you caught that, but so when I go to appointments, I wear a suit. And people always say that, oh, I didn't expect you to wear a suit or I didn't expect you to look so nice. A pat is called pattern disruption. The client didn't expect that. So that's good. I don't know what they expected, but they didn't expect that. So that so they pointed out 
<laughs> it works every time. And I tell them, I use the same joke every single time. I swear, I the same thing. It always, you can see he laughs. I always say this. They compliment anything. That's why I say when you go into somebody's house, always take off your shoes. It's a little trick for you guys. Always take your, your shoes off and wear nice socks. And they'll compliment it. They'll say, or they'll say something about it. And then this is what I say. My wife says, whenever somebody compliments me, let her know. Crickets, right? I didn't hear nobody laugh at that. Because it's not mm -hmm. funny. But in the context in which they're saying it, when that during that exchange, hills, hills. Right. I say it every time. What? Mr. Andrew? Yes. How are you? Not possible. <laughs> yeah, it was nice. Proper. Oh, excellent. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My wife always says, someone compliments you, let me know. So I'll let her know. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, I like the olives. The olives? Or like a space. Space? Yeah. Space. I like olives. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, well, this is um, John. Just John. Hey, John Jeremiah. Tom, Tom my sister, uh, Jeremiah. So, yeah, we basically just have a Pennsylvania title to sign yeah. over our car. Excellent. Um, and so, yeah, yeah, we just kind of were like, you only have one of these. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Hit it right the first time. Right? Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if you caught that. You said we basically have a Pennsylvania title to sign over a car. All right. So there's two individuals, two men, and they're just signing over the one of these MUVs, these um, these uh, these big camper vans, and it's like it's beautiful, right? It's kitted out. It has all this stuff inside. It's nice. It's great. But he's obviously selling it now. I'm basically here to do two things, right? So he, this is the beginning of the appointment. I'm based, after they do all the introductions, everybody's identified themselves. This is where you tell the person without telling them. I'm here to do two things. And then you tell them two things. Number one, you got to prove to me that you are who you say you are. Do that with a driver's license, passport, ID card, Costco card, library card, ha, 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 right? Obviously, you can't do that. But it's a, just a little bit of a joke. Again, not funny. Not ha 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 funny, but in that moment it kills. I mean, you gotta prove to me that you already say you are. Number one, I witness you sign. You know, uh, uh, and then number two, uh, you know, I'll take your document, stamp it, and sign it, and that's it. All right, that's it. But that's the gist of it. But kind of see how I navigate through that to signal to the person this is the beginning of the appointment, and I'm in control of this appointment. It's going to come in handy later on because they're going to have questions. So, and I'm going to re-explain to them, I'm here to do two things. I'm not here to answer your questions. And <laughs> I'm not here to do that. I'm here to do two things, okay? We agreed on that. So this is why it's going to come in handy later on. Yeah, right. You had it right the first time, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm basically here to do two things, right? Maybe three things, but really think First, you got to prove to me that you are. We, yeah, yeah. Right? So you do that with a driver's license yeah. or an ID card or... A passport or something, or Costco card or something. Or <laughs> no, Did he no. laugh? Mind if I grab this? Sure. Yeah. All right. And um, my record your information. I'll have you sign my journal. So you want to get those pay, give a thumb print. Sure. All right. So the second thing. When I say the thumb print, I always point. Thumb print. And then they say, yeah, yeah, it's okay. Okay, good. Make sure you know. I know some places you don't have to give a thumbprint. Um, to me, that's crazy because I, that's how you prove that somebody's alive, a real person, in the event that it comes up. But you should always take a thumbprint and um, use jail and use all that stuff. But tell the person, I'm going to witness you sign, then I'm going to take a thumbprint. Sure. Right. So the second thing I do is, um, you know what Charlie Baker is? Yeah. He's our Secretary of State. Andrew, she wants me to witness me on this document. Right? Uh -huh. It's gotta be you. It can't be Bob or yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. it's gotta be you. Yeah. After that, I'll complete the certificate stamp. That's it. Oh, so you just need a signature. So the second part I said, the second thing I do is you know who Shirley Weber is? That's our Secretary of State. She wants me to witness you sign this. It can't be Bob or it can't be Susan down the street. It's gotta be you. All right. After that, then I'll complete your certificate, stamp, that's it. And he's like, Oh, well, that's it. I was like, Yeah, that's it. That's very simple. That's it. Oh, so you just need a signature on that. So I haven't examined the document, so I'm not sure who's on the sign, but whoever okay. does, okay. Okay, I know where I just did. Okay. So the ID looks good. Feel free to go get started. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are you using blue ink or black ink? Black. All right. All right. So at this stage, everybody's in agreement. 
And I say, your ID looks good. Check the expiration date. It looks okay. I'll record it. You sign it. So at the same time, he's signing, I'm recording. So this is why it's so quick, so fast. Everybody got that? He's signing the document. He's putting his name on the signature, and I'm recording it at the same time. And when he's done signing, then because I'm recording it in my journal, we're going to swap. We're going to switch. I'm going to hand him the journal, and then he's going to hand me the document so that I can complete the certificate. So we're doing the same thing. And not one at a time. We're we're doing it both simultaneously. All right. And then something always comes up. Something will always inevitably pop up. He's going to say, oh, I got a question about this. Yeah. Are you using blue ink or black ink? Black. All right. Black. One thing I always like to tell people is that, especially if you're doing an appointment and there's a lot going on, um, don't ask any questions. If the person signing the document, it'd be crazy that you would sign something that you didn't read, <laughs> right? But people do that all the time. They sign things that they have never even looked at. They think they know what it is, but they, they're not lawyers. They're not legal assistants, they're not judges, they're not any of the, they're just people, they're just regular people. They're just, they just know that they were told, somebody gave them instructions, hey, go get this notarized. They don't even know what that means. They just heard it. They just know that word notary. They, 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 they really don't know. So this might be the very first time that they ever really looked at this document before they signed careful to ask people hey do you know what you're signing careful about that question because you know what people are inclined to say they're they're put it this way if i said if i told you if i said mary had a little and then you would say lamb probably right mary had a little lamb but mary could have a little brother she could have a mary could have a, a, a <laughs> she could have a little anything right but because it's so implanted in our minds if you ask somebody hey do you know what you're signing or do you you know do you understand what you're signing most people will incline to say no <laughs> they, they, they i haven't read this because they the truth is that they didn't so be careful with that question because that's going to prolong the appointment unnecessarily whether they know what they're signing or not it's not up to you to decide that it really isn't whether they understand what they're signing or not even if you knew that they didn't understand, how 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 would you really know? How? So that question is got is got to be very very careful. If they're reading it, let them read it. If they're taking their time and they're they haven't signed it yet, let them take their time. Don't ask them. Hey, do you understand? Just let them read it because that's what probably what they're doing because they never looked at it before. So they're just kind of going over it give them give them a second give them give them a moment and then what i like to do is i'll say all done because if i if i see that they haven't signed anything i'll say all done and they say i don't know i'm just taking my time okay take your time don't ask them hey do you understand what you're signing that question can get you in trouble and uh and yeah you'll end up being there 45 minutes or you'll end up having to cancel the appointment it happens all the time so, listen that's why you hear silence. <laughs> I pulled the phone out of my pocket. I'm signing the seller here. Cool. Good. So I have the notary part, actually. I think that's the part that the stamp goes there. So the stamp goes here. So which part is he approving? Is it this one up here or this one to the side? They sound confused, don't they? You hear that? They're like, oh, does he sign there? See, that means that they never looked at it before. What do you do? Do you start advising them on what to do or do you let them figure it out? Do you speed it up by telling them what to do or do you risk staying there for an extra half an hour <laughs> unnecessarily by letting them figure it out? Which one? You take that risk. I heard that. <laughs> well, no, otherwise you end up becoming a lawyer, right? Maybe. 
Yeah, there's no right or wrong answer, man. It's what was how valuable is your time? That's the question I would ask. You would let them what? Just figure it out. Yeah, I, I guess it all depends on the total situation, right? If yeah. you've been there and everything was going along pretty fast, and then this slows down, maybe you let it go a little bit longer. If you're been there for you know forty five minutes. And you look like there's 45 more to go. <laughs> I don't know. You say, okay, hey, look, I'll come back or what? <laughs> That's right. You have two options. Say I'll come back, or you know, when you when you guys figure this out, call me back. Like I'll come back. All right, no problem. Or you just take charge. Yeah, say, listen, you are not going to sign here, right? Always do it in the form of a question. You are not going to sign there, right? You are not the subscribing witness, right? You are not the principal, correct? Right? <laughs> then they they can say yes or no. That demonstrates understanding. Without telling them you are the principal, you are the agent, you are the subscribing witness, you are the, you know, instead of doing all that, ask them, "Hey, are you the subscribing witness?" And say, "Uh, I don't know. Are you the agent? Uh, I don't know. Are you the principal?" Then let them figure it out, right? They they know. They know. They, sometimes they're just they just need a little bit of a push. They're not sure they're, because they're not lawyers. They don't know. They never looked at it. They didn't even read it. This one up here or this one to the side? I think it's this right here because that's my, this going to be my signature. Um, that's it. Then just needs to get done. Okay. Yeah, I think so, man. Just make sure the right person's selling the car, basically. Yeah. Okay. And so both my my name and my mother's name is on the title. Okay. Because um, that I have a power of attorney for to sign for her. Good question. How do you answer that question? Do you guys catch that? I didn't I didn't catch it. All right, I'll play it again. This is gonna be my signature. Um that's it. Then just needs to get done. Okay. Yeah, I think so, man. Just make sure the right person's selling the car basically. Yeah. Okay. And so both my my name and my mother's name is on the title. Okay. Um because that I have a power of attorney for to sign for her. Good question. And both my name and my mother's name are on the document. I have power of attorney over her. He has power of attorney to sign for her. So is it okay for him to sign? Does he have to prove it to you? Uh, Yes and no. Pref <laughs> preferably if he has a, a, a signed power of attorney that says that he can sign as her attorney in fact, then yes, that would be great. But if he doesn't have it, then what? Do you let him sign or do you just walk away? I'd give up. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? I So in, in this case, you say, you ask the person, were you instructed, again, never answer the question, always respond with the question, were you instructed to sign a specific way? Because if you are the attorney, if you are a possumized power of attorney, we, the way you sign your name, like let's say if I have power of attorney over my wife, I would say my name, Takamaku, attorney, attorney in fact for you know Mrs. Amaku. I would say that. I would write it as that. Now that's the way you're supposed to do it. But there's a couple of different ways to do it. But that's the way I would do it. Attorney in fact, you say power of attorney for or power of attorney as his mother's name. Write your name, and then you designate that you are the person who is the attorney in fact or the power of attorney for another person. You ask the person, and this demonstrates understanding again. Do they know what they're doing? Because again, if I tell him what's right, now all of a sudden, now I'm acting as right legal counsel. If I tell him, if I instruct him what to write, I ask, were you given specific instructions on how to sign this? And if he says no, now we have a problem. If he says yes, then we can proceed. Okay, so that question, that will come up. You will see that where people, they claim to be power of attorneys. They either have the power of attorney in their hand, which is the bulletproof way to go about it. This is why power of attorneys are so important. Carry it with you. If you use somebody's power of attorney, carry it with you when you're going to uh, handle official business. Otherwise, you ask them, hey, what, what were the instructions that you were given by your attorney how to sign it? This is gonna be my signature. Um, That's it. Just, I think so. Man. Just make sure the right person's selling the car, basically.
Yeah. Okay. And so both my my name and my mother's name is on the title. Okay. Um, because that I have a power of attorney for to sign for her. Good question. And I'm happy you mentioned that. So, are you going to sign as mom as well? Uh, yeah, that would be okay. Yeah. yeah. So, which I like could have just had her sign a while ago. But... True. Yeah. So there are. So this happens. No worries. Yeah. Now, were you given instructions as to how to sign? So, for example, it would be Andrew as power attorney as. Oh, as, uh, like, were for, you given? no, not really. Okay. But it's just signature of seller and signature of post. Okay, so. so that's good enough. Then I'll note in the journal that you do in fact have a power attorney. Yeah, yeah. Do you have an yeah. example of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, I'll so good question, James. He actually had the power of attorney with him. Great okay. question. Yeah, I would yeah. hope so. Actually. <laughs> Yeah, he had it. Yeah. <laughs> Great question, though. Here, I asked him, Does you have proof of that? And he said, Yeah, I do have it. Yeah, yeah. Do you have yeah. an example of it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, unless you were given specific instructions, then go feel free. Yeah, yeah, I was just going to sign it the way our names appear there. So, okay. Um, okay. That, that's kind of the best. Yeah. Usually, uh, an, an attorney will tell you how to sign it. Now, yeah. there's no necessarily wrong way to do okay. it, but. As long as you are indicating that I'm, I'm not my mother. I'm actually signing on for her, and right. I have the as a power of attorney. Okay. So as long as you indicate, yeah, yeah. You should be, you're good to go. And the, the notary that we talked to for the power attorney just said, sign it the way it's written here with the, that order that's written. There. Good enough. Go. Cool. All right, you guys catch that whole exchange there. If you when you sign a power of attorney like for yourself, hopefully you guys all have these especially if you're watching this on replay. If there's anything I can tell you to save your family and save money, <laughs> go get a power of attorney because you you will need it. All right, at some point you will need it. But that said, or when you officially establish a power of attorney, they'll tell you how in the event you need to sign for your mother, grandmother, daughter, kids or whatever, how to sign your name. So like, for example, if I were to sign for my wife, I would sign as attorney in fact. That's how you was. That's how the lawyers instructed me to sign, and um, that's how I've ever. That's I've only seen it done that way. I mean, there's other examples, but I, I that's how I've always ever seen it, especially like in medical facilities and things like that. So he's signing, and um, he's signing the document. I've already recorded his information in the journal. I'm gonna have him sign my journal, give a thumbprint before I stamp the documents. And we're still only about like two minutes into this appointment. They don't start at the five minute mark. All right. All right. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. So at this point, he's done. You see that he's done. Then this is where you do the exchange. And then again, keep the appointment, keep command of the appointment, let, letting them know or signaling to this person that you're in control, not them. You are the captain of the enterprise. All right. They, they're not calling any shots, they don't ask you any questions. You are the person who asks questions. All right. It's that kind of that dynamic that's always established that dynamic from the very beginning until the end. You are the person who's in control. You are the power caller, not them. All right. They look to you for answers. Not it's not the other way around. And then um, we had a question about uh, the way that you are. Um, I mean, uh, do I need to sign anything here and need your approval for it? I don't think, I don't so, think right? you do. That's yeah. it? It's, okay. Yeah. So I'm not part of this. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's you that you are the correct person. Yeah. Did you have a question about your address? Or... Oh. Yeah. Uh, my address, yes. So the driver's license address that I have. See, here we go with the questions then again. Now, this is probably an easy one, but I'll let you guys hear what he's saying. It's probably irrelevant, too, to be honest, but let's see. Okay, so I'm not part of this. Okay, yeah. it's you that you are the correct person. Yeah. Did you have a question about your address? Or... Oh, yeah. Uh, my address, yes. So the driver's license address that I have yes. is my old address. I moved to a new place. Okay. I never updated my driver's license yet. It didn't come around yet. Yeah. So is that a problem? Or is this a new address? Uh, you guys, catch that question. What's the answer? You need to have his driver's license. That was. In no, case. he had it. He had it, but the address on the driver's license was different than his current address. He just hasn't updated. So, so what that, I mean, yeah, the what? driver's license has a picture <clears throat> and it identifies who he is. So that's what you care about, right? Yes, that's correct. 
and the license is still valid, just with a a date that you wouldn't know was wrong had he not told you. Yep, you got it. Yep. So is that a problem? Is this Good the question. You address? Good question. Um, sounds like a question for an attorney. I know. <laughs> it sounds like yeah. a car. Actually, it sounds like a car question. To be honest, like, this uh, happens or, a lot. But this type of yeah, I'm. I'm gonna go and go ahead and put the new address because that's where I want the title and stuff to be sent to. That makes Should sense. Be okay. Yeah. Okay. Should be okay. You see how he answered his own question? I didn't even answer it. He just answered his own question. I said, it sounds like a question for an attorney. <laughs> and they know what to do. They're just looking for you to say something. right? People do this all the time. You notice this. People, they instinctively just, they like to ask questions even though they already know the answer. They're just looking for that favorite C word. Our favorite C word is confirmation. That's why it's easy to get appointments because when people call you, all they're looking for is that C word confirmation they already they know what to do they just looking for you to validate it i say hey man sounds like a question for an attorney he said oh i'll just go ahead and do it yeah come on man come on <laughs> that makes Should sense be okay yeah. okay be okay our rule of thumb is consistency is always good yeah yeah so yeah. you know that's but i have my bills and everything sent there with my name so yeah, yeah. new address that that makes sense. Sense. okay so that's, that's okay yeah instead of having the title it's wrong yeah that's fine. all right all done yeah so tell me the name of the document you just signed. Uh, this is a Pennsylvania title certificate of, All right. of title for people. All right. There All right, so now I'm writing in a journal. So we got the address thing out of the way. He's done signing. I'm done recording. But I have to put the title of the document inside of the journal. Or I ask him, what is the name of the document you just signed? Because those, these are his words. What is the name of the power of attorney, Pennsylvania title of transfer? What is it? And I write down exactly what he says. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Andrew, can you please sign my journal? Yes, sir. All right, let's switch. All right, this. so this is the swap. I say, hey, can you please sign my journal? He goes, yes. And he say, yeah, all right, let's switch. I take the document. He takes my journal. He signs his name. And then we're going to get a thumbprint. But as he's signing my journal, I'm looking at his work. Only thing I'm looking for are signatures. I don't care about the contents. I don't care how much money they're making or what they're sold it for. I'm looking for signatures because that's how documents get rejected. And the last thing you want is the documents get rejected because they're going to look at you and say, hey, man, you told me to, you said, she said, you're the reason why I want a refund. <laughs> And you know we don't do refunds, do we? We do not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Andrew, can you please sign my journal? Yes, sir. All right, let's switch. I'll take this one. I'll take this one. Can you please sign on this box here? Black King Sun. Black King is okay for the journal. Yeah. yeah. All right. People always ask, is Black Ink okay for the journal? Is that okay? Blue Ink, is that okay? For the journal, it's okay. The document is, is specific to what they want, right? But the journal doesn't matter. And then I'm going to say, give me your thumb. Give me your right thumb. I'll clean it. And then I'll get a thumbprint. This, there's opportunities for jokes throughout this whole thing. The the name, people will talk about consistency. The thumbprint, people went to jail. It, it's, I've said the jokes thousands of times, but they work. <laughs> they work. It makes it so much faster. All right. Don't forget your ID. Yeah. I'm going to clean your right thumb. Just yeah. a tiny bit of zeal. Put this on your right thumb. Just yes. a little bit. Rub it in. Put some friction there. Once it's dry, press down here. <laughs> I might even say the joke that I always say. I'm not the FBI. Watch. And people love. Ugh, it's not even funny, but <laughs> I'm telling you, in the context, it's funny. Give me your right thumb. I'll put some gel, clean it, and then we'll get a thumbprint, right? A little bit of gel, a little bit of ink. Rub it in. It's only been five minutes. Put friction there. Once it's dry, press down here. <laughs> Don't worry about it. You got the cleanest hands I've seen all week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I'm not saying something. Yeah, it's Friday. Straight down here on this box here. Yep. All right. Looks good. To me that you are who you say you are. And I witnessed you sign here. So let me take this from me. This is how the conclusion of the appointment comes. All right, Andrew, 
James, Carmen, Jose, you've proven to me that you are who you say you are. And I also witnessed you sign a document. Now I'll complete your certificate stamp and now we're done. That's how you signal to the person that this is done. No more questions, no more rah-rah, we are we are all done. Throughout the whole entire appointment, it's only been five minutes so far, almost six minutes. You're signaling to people, this appointment is being advanced, is being moved forward and you know you guys are all done. And people like that, I'm telling you. They don't want you in their house all day long. You don't want people in your house more longer than they have to be. Same thing with other people, businesses. They want you to come and get out. Do what you have to do and leave they, so they can get back to doing whatever they're doing. People, they really, really appreciate that. Trust me on this. And I know you do as well. All right, we're good. All right, so you've proven to me that you are who you say you are. And I've witnessed you sign here. So I can take this for me. I'll sign here. Filling out the so, acknowledgement. As you're ending the appointment, tell the person, all right, man, you're all done. Um, you've proven to me that you are who you say you are, and uh, when did you sign? So um, here's the conclusion. And again, people, they're, they're looking for this. They like this. They want you to get out of their house or out of their business. Let, let's see how I, I do this. And I do the same thing every single time. Let's see. This is the state of California, correct? And they say, yes. This is the county of Alameda, correct? And they say, yes. You know, this is an opportunity for people to show their sense of humor as well. Sometimes they say silly things like, oh, no, this is actually Mexico, right? <laughs> or this is the, oh, last time I checked, this is the county of Alameda. But it gives you an opportunity to be playful with the person. Right? This is the county of Alameda, correct? Yes. So there's something I have to give you. Right. So these... They look kind of similar, don't they? If you look at this point, his acknowledgement is outdated. Um, depending on where you're watching this from, you might have a different acknowledgement than California has. And as a matter of fact, I know. But in California, um, there's a lot of money here, which means there's a lot of thieves here, a lot of people who lie here. And I know it's no different than other place, but it's really is a lot of criminals here in California. So the acknowledgements here, they have a special box. And whenever somebody has a, an acknowledgement that does not have that box, you have to give it to them. And this is the way I present it. Sometimes people are so adamant about the documents that they have. But here's how I tell people, what you have is no good. What you have is actually outdated. This is the updated version. And this is what you need. You have something that's wrong. And that way, the, way I, the reason why I do it that way is because there's no discussion. I have to give this to you. Sometimes people are, they can be a little bit, uh, I don't want to say combative, but they they question, why do I need this one? Did my attorney do it wrong? Did my um, escrow officer do, do this incorrectly? No, <laughs> they didn't do anything wrong, but they didn't know this is the outdated version. So I'm, what I'm doing is giving you the updated version. So this is how I explain to people without any questions. I say, this is California, correct? This is kind of Alameda, correct? All right. I have to give you something. I just tell them straight up. I have to give you something. What you have is very similar to what I have, but yours is the old version. Mine is the new one. This is what you need. And I say it just like that. That way, no questions asked. These, they look kind of similar, don't they? So you look sort of like in this box here, and then you look at this document here. They look very similar. The only difference, you see, this box here, wherever my, I was talking about my boss earlier, yeah. so wherever, uh -huh. yeah. wherever my signature goes, where my stamp goes, this box needs to be here. Okay. I don't see that box on this document, uh -huh. which is okay. I'll give it to you. Okay. All right. Cool. So, because we're in California, yeah. right? We agree. The laws don't change here every year. They change every day. Yeah. <laughs> we're in California. You agree? Yes. We're in California, Alameda. Yeah, you agree? The laws don't change here every year. They change every day. What you have is old. What I have is new. Agree? He says, yeah. Okay, good. And then you end the appointment. I don't have to tell you that, right? Oh, yeah. You know I get that. it around the business. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. This is the most recent up-to-date from okay, here. Cool. It's kind of like a receipt. I yeah. have to give this to you. Now, sometimes people want me to sign and stamp this, which, again, is okay. But, again, California, 
Time to go Anita. We're law change every day. Yeah. This is the one you need. You also need that. Yeah. What do you want me to do with this? Um, I think that I needs still to get still recommend yeah, dance yeah, something that. Good enough. That's cool. That will yeah. go to the DMV and yeah, things that's that's what I'll need a copy of this later. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I submit this and they have an issue with this, they will also have that. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. We we'll just make a copy of that. Good enough. All right. That's the only thing I can think of to prevent any back and forth at the DMV. Yeah. yeah. You want to do this right the first time, preferably. All right. Yeah. All right, uh, I'm going to write your name exactly as written here. For, uh, let's see, first name, middle name, and last name. Yes. All right, All right. and then mom is first name, middle initial, yep. last name. Yep. Okay. Which is just on the flip side of this. Okay. So you're copying the names exactly how it's written. Middle name, middle initials, nothing different. Everything's consistent. And they... You involve them in that as well. So that they like that because now they know. First name, middle name, first name, middle initial, first two initials, last name, whatever. You like your middle name? Do I like mine? Yeah. More than my last, yeah. <laughs> I was like, this is always an opportunity to ask the person, hey, do you like your middle name? This is how you end the appointment on a great note. And they say, uh, not really. Or they say, yeah, I do like it. All right. There's always, then I say, there's always a story behind a middle name. And then they share that story. And that's how you end the appointment on a positive note. It works every time. Or sometimes people, they don't have middle names. All right. And I say, and then if they don't have, if I notice that they don't have a middle name, then I'll say this. I'll say, most people I meet, you know, most people don't like their middle names. And he says, oh, really? Oh, I don't have the problem. And I'll say, great. There's always a story. Or I'll say, there's always a story behind a middle name. Then they'll laugh and they'll say, yeah, there's always somebody's name after somebody, a grandfather or relative or something like that but this is how you end the appointment as you're signing their document and filling out their acknowledgement do i like mine yeah more than my last yeah <laughs> i was like you know what i'm gonna be more in the the room like you know just go by andrew <laughs> Wait, so like i know how to spell that all of that it's not a problem i meet a lot of people who don't like their middle name oh really yeah i mean it's not it's a pretty basic name yeah. right it's honest it's not the best name. But there's always a story behind the middle of the name. It's like, like way more fun names out there, but you know, I'm also going to be on your set. You know, All right, stamp it, wow. sign it, good to go. Before I stamp this, I have to issue you an oath. Okay. All right, so I'll issue. Oh, I have to say an oath to him. I have to give him an oath. I don't know why I have to give him an oath, but um, to give him the oath and then I'll stamp it. Don't stamp it before the oath. Stamp it after the oath. All right. Right. I'll repeat words and then you say yes. yes. Okay. That's how it works. All right. Okay. So, Andrew, you can swear to a higher power or you can affirm to your personal honor. Okay. Either one is fine. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Issuing the oath. Two things. You can either swear to a higher power or you can affirm to your personal honor. Either one is fine. You just pick one. Just pick one. And then most people, they'll say, yeah, I'll swear to a higher power. Or they'll say, no, I'll affirm to my personal honor. Good enough. Just pick one, man. And then I'll repeat the verse, and then you say, yes, I do. That's it. All right? And then, then you confirm understanding, and they say, yes. Okay. So and then you read an oath, and then they say, yes, I do. Raise your right hand. All right. Sure. So, Andrew, you can swear to a higher power, or you can affirm to your personal honors. Okay. okay. Either one's fine. Yeah. 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 So, again, thank you for raising your right hand. Yeah. I was at the verse, and say, yes, I do. You don't need to swear to a higher power or do you affirm to your personal honor under the penalty of the United States that the information that is on this document is true and is accurate to the best of your knowledge. Yes. Good enough. Yeah. All right. So, so you stand up here, you get all right. And then um, that's how they do the oath. Do you swear to our power or do you affirm to your personal honor that the information is true? Under the penalty of perjury of the United States of America is accurate to the best of your knowledge. And they say, Yes, I do. And I say, Good enough. Stamp it. Any questions? And that's how you end the appointment. Then they say, no, I don't have any questions. Good enough. If you have any questions, feel free to call us. You are now under oath. Is there any questions you want to ask him? Three things. Number one, you got to have the seal. You don't have oh, yeah. I say this to him. Yeah. Three things got to have the seal. You got to be able to read the commission number in the expiration date. And then you hold the paper up to them and say, is this okay with you? <laughs> is this okay? And they say, yes, it is. Or they say, no, it's not. Usually they say yes.
And if there's a wife there or a husband wife dynamic, it's always ask, look at the spouse and say, is there anything you want to ask the person while they're under oath? They love that. Again, ending the appointment on a positive note. Let <laughs> me put that in my hand. Right <laughs> Three things. Number one, you gotta have the seal. If you don't have the seal, you're gonna say, "Hey, Andrew, go back." Yeah, yeah. Seal. Damn, bring back. Yeah, you got that. You got Secondly, it. if you can read the commitment number, and third, you can read the expiration date. You're happy. I'm happy. Yeah. All right, that's it. All right, and that's how the appointment ends. All right, is that how you do your appointments? Um. I feel like I'd be more. I feel like I, I I'd be like nervous a lot of the times, you know. So I try to like not speak as much, you know. But like the way you do it, man, like that takes practice. I I like it, man. Thank you for sharing this. I really appreciate you sharing. Yeah, no problem, man. It, it you're right. It does come with practice, man. Like you can't really substitute the the amount of practice. And once you find something that works, then keep doing it. Keep doing it. Usually, like, what I say at the end, I just say thank you for hiring us. You know, if, if you ever need anything else, you know, please call us back again. Yeah. And what do they say? Uh, they, they say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they say, yeah, like, um, like we will, you know. Usually they, they say they will. Yeah, see, that works. So keep doing that. Yeah. Um, I like to end the appointment. I, you know, you know how we say the, um, hey, did, did you make the appointment? And they say, yeah, I did. I say, great. You know, did, did you have a bad experience with the scheduling um, component? And then I say, no, I didn't. It was great. It was easy. It was fun. It was fast. It was convenient. It was simple. And then th that's the when they say those things, that's the review. So when you when you start asking for reviews, and you know you get you when you have your clients and you want a review because not enough people ask for reviews, just point blank, not enough people do this. But when they tell you, "Hey, what was your experience like with the whole? Was the communication easy? Was it fast? Was it punctual? Was it on time?" And they say, "Yeah, it was easy. It was fun. It was fast." I say, "Great." You're going to get a text message tomorrow or an email or a phone call, and they're going to ask about your experience. When they say, oh, yeah, it's five stars. Give it go. I'll make sure I hire you next time. And then you say, yeah, if you have any questions, give us a call. Never miss an opportunity to um, upsell somebody or never miss an opportunity to share your other products and services with them. And uh, because they've already paid you, you know, they've already kind of done business with you. So this is an opportunity for you to keep it going.